Welcome back. Welcome back. Happy Monday, friends. Uh, today we'll be talking about some largely macro concerns that are affecting the whole globe. We're going to get into food shortages, um, rising cost of material inputs for the agriculture sector. We'll get into the energy crisis and OPEC slashing production. We're going to get into uh, Russia's <laughs> threats of nuclear war. It's going to be a fun one today, friends. Um, yeah, I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled out today, so I won't be uploading much this week. I might pre-record a few videos today before I go in, uh, just so you know we have some uploads through the week and so I can keep you guys updated. But yeah, let's kind of get right in. There's there's a lot of things that have happened over the last few days since the last time we all met. Um, we do know that OPEC has followed along in Russia's footsteps with cutting oil production. It looks like they've slashed, that's my alarm. It looks like they've slashed production about 2 million barrels a day. And in short, they're doing this to stop the oil prices from decreasing. So you limit demand, or I'm sorry, you limit supply that increases demand that drives the prices up. Uh, scarcity creates demand. So the less there is of something, the more demand you have for it, the more the value increases. So we're going to see gas prices skyrocket. Again, I don't think this is going to happen until after the election. As you guys probably well know, um, our strategic oil reserves are close to being depleted right now. And that is because basically <clears throat> Biden has been depleting the strategic oil reserves to keep gas prices cheaper for the American consumer. The issue with that is when our reserves are depleted, again, the prices of oil are going to skyrocket and, you know, we're going to be left footing the bill for, you know, $5 on average a gallon gas. So now the question is, is this a strategic move to, on purpose, deplete the oil reserves to further push the EV agenda, the sustainability agenda? Um, I don't know. You know, it could be petroleum is a limited resource, but it could also just be, you know, the administration might be trying to force the world into a more sustainable direction, a more green, clean energy Um facilitative move. So can't really say if it's strategic or it's, you know, we're just literally running out of oil by accident. Can't really say that's a little above my pay grade there, but we are <laughs> running very, very low on oil. The strategic reserves are at the lowest point that they've ever been at. And yeah, and we have OPEC slashing production. So we're definitely going to see a significant increase in oil prices again. And there's been a lot of chatter of Russia and the threat of nuclear war. So the research that I've done about this topic, it looks like there has been quite a few vehicles that were spotted and identified that are moving equipment that's associated with a nuclear weapon unit. But there has not been any confirmation that there are missiles in these vehicles. There's not any confirmation of like exactly what is being transported from this facility. There's a very strategic reason that these kinds of videos get released to the public, right? So whether it's a show of force by Putin, whether it's a threat to the rest of the world, whether it's just whether it's just to keep everybody on their toes, who knows? The White House has come out and said after Biden's comments about, you know, the world being on the brink of Armageddon, the White House has come out and said this past weekend that there is no evidence that Russia's planning to use nuclear uh, weapons or there's no sign of, um, you know, just nuclear warfare pending. So there was a little discrepancies uh, and non-alignment coming down through the White House 
Biden's remarks versus his administration's remarks surrounding the matter. It does differ quite a bit um, regarding sentiment around this issue. But yeah, we, we're, we're going to see oil prices going up. Uh, it doesn't appear that we're on the verge of nuclear war just yet. That could all change. That could change tomorrow. But as of today, what I'm seeing, my observations, the reports that are coming down from the White House and the EU, it doesn't look like there is an imminent threat. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll kind of play that by ear and, and see what happens. But the next thing I want to really touch on is something I feel like that isn't really being talked about, but it's super important because it's very relative to the CPI data and the food price increases. So you've heard me talk a lot about supply chain shortages. You've heard me talk a lot about the supply shocks, rising costs of material inputs, you know, what is required to make this item, right? All of the input costs are increasing. So uniquely in the agriculture sector, and this has been an issue since the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war, because Russia is a primary exporter of oil and Ukraine is a primary exporter of wheat. And having these two countries at war with each other with both having such crucial impacts on the agriculture sector, it's it's been absolutely detrimental. So through the last year and a half, and of course, including the seven, eight month Ukraine-Russia war, we've seen food prices soaring. And this is largely due to inflation, but there are a lot of input costs that are increasing. The price of fertilizer is skyrocketing because the price of oil is also skyrocketing. The price of corn and wheat is increasing. That in turn creates an increase in price for the feed that cattle are ingesting. So everything in the agriculture sector is becoming more expensive from the fertilizer to actually produce and sustain crops and those crops becoming more expensive are making the feed for the cattle more expensive, which in turn is making your meat prices soar. So this is not something that's really being widely talked about or, or even widely understood because people aren't really focusing on like the disrupted trade routes. So we've seen a lot of different issues in the Black Sea, which is a major trade route uh, right in the middle of Russia and Ukraine, uh, right in the middle of those borders. So food prices, we haven't seen, we haven't seen the top yet. Um, I do think that there's going to be global shortages throughout the world in terms of agriculture, wheat, corn, meat prices are through the roof. So we're going to see a lot of increased food prices, even, even more than we've seen over the last you know year and a half. It's going to get, get worse, guys. I hate to be, I hate to be the doomsday feed and the uh always the bearer of bad news, but I do believe it's very important to stay informed and just kind of keep these things on your radar. Like it's it's very important to understand the macro conditions that are going to have a huge impact like on our day-to-day -day lives and just the markets in general so my next video i'll probably upload um one a little later on today about what we can expect this week important dates for this week um any kind of reports any important earnings that are coming up and over the next few days i'll try you know if my teeth are all healed up i'll try to upload a video focusing more on earnings trajectory, unemployment trajectory, and um, you know what are the what are the corporations doing to prepare for a recession? What are the big institutions doing to prepare 
and what can you know what can we learn from them what can we pick up from their habits you know what are they preparing for what moves are they taking to begin to prepare for the recession uh the global recession that is pending and again you know the market conditions can always pivot right so if the fed decides we're going to keep artificially holding up the markets and we're going to stop raising rates um because the rest of the world is now really putting pressure on the feds to stop raising interest rates we'll see if it happens uh, again they've come out and said many times that they're not going to raise rates but we'll see what happens we'll see if they do continue on this course or if they slow it down taper it back a bit but yeah hopefully that was insightful we had some just some interesting things happening some interesting info that i thought was important to share and you know what what we can expect as a result of that info being being released and publicized so until next time friends